Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be opening up a new part I got in the mail. Got the box right here on the workbench. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I got. Before I start today's video, I just wanna say thank you guys for 100 subs. 100 subs might not be a lot for everybody, but it's a lot for me. And I never expected myself to hit 100 subs whatsoever. Also, on the last previous video, I got a lot of positive feedback and thank you guys so much for that. You guys are liking the E30 build and it's pretty cool that you guys are commenting what you guys think about it. You guys are giving all the support. Appreciate that so much. Again, I said, just hitting that milestone with the 100 subs, it means a lot for me. It gives me a lot of motivation to start doing YouTube even more. So thank you guys for giving me 100 subs and let's get back to opening this package. I really wanna show you guys what I got for the 30 as well. All right, got the box open. I wanted to make sure that everything was inside the box. I didn't want to film anything and have something missing. Of course, we got a little bit of Condor Speed Shop goodies. And if you guys don't know what this is, all right, guys, I'm going to stop it right here real quick. Before you guys go further into the video, I got my wording wrong. So if you guys hear me saying steering coupler, I meant to say steering shaft. So if you guys hear me saying steering coupler, I said it wrong. I meant to say steering shaft. So don't roast me in the comments. And I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the video. This is a universal steering coupler for the BMW E30, E36, E46, and also I believe the Z3 as well. I think it'll be better if I just set this up so you guys will have a better picture on how this looks. And just like that, got it assembled. Took me about five minutes, not too crazy to assemble this. It's pretty straightforward. They do send you a little extraction card, but it's kind of cut off, so there's not really that much use for it. But once you get everything, you know, all spread out on the table, it's pretty easy to put together. Like I said, um, everything's straightforward with the screws. You do need an Allen wrench. I don't know what size it is because I just have a bucket of Allen wrenches. But you do need an Allen wrench and you also need a 13 millimeter wrench for it also as well. So, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Everything is really sturdy. And also the quality, I think is way better than the stock OEM one. I do want to compare this one with the stock OEM one that comes normally inside the E30s. I have one right here laying on the side and just a huge difference this in size, it's way better in my opinion. And not only in size, it's a lot thinner too. So that will give me a lot more space inside the engine bay and also a lot more clearance. Now, as you can see from the stock one versus the Condor Speed Shop coupler, the stock one, of course, it has a lot of these little kinks and most of these kinks are just bushings for it to flex. So you still have a little bit of flexibility with your steering shaft. Compared to this one, it's just direct. So. Of course, with the new one, you do have dual joints from the top to the bottom. Same thing with this one, but with this one over time, there's a lot of flexibility, not in from the top and not from the bottom. A lot of this tends to flex and there's a lot of companies that make a lot of bushings for to either shorten it or to replace the bushing just to make it a lot sturdier. But there's also a different option that you could go with, which gained the Carter Speed Shell Coupler. And of course, I know this is made for only track use, but for steering response, in my opinion, I'd rather just go with the Condor Speed Shop one. You still can go with the stock OEM one. Like I said before, there are still companies that make bushings for this and you could shorten it comparing what steering rack you have, or you could just change the bushing and they could solve all your problems. But for me, I just don't like how the steering shaft looks inside the engine bay of this car. It takes up a lot of room. And I think for steering response, this will be way better than this one. Now you guys know the difference between the stock OEM coupler versus a new Conor Speed Shop coupler. And to give you guys just a little example, I wanna show you guys how much space I have with the stock OEM one and how it'll be a big difference with using the Conor Speed Shop one. All right, guys, I wanna show you on how the stock OEM coupler looks inside the car. So I know for a fact, this one needs to be replaced. The other day when I was driving the car, I heard a lot of clunking coming from the steering column. Also, a lot of vibrations coming from the steering wheel too as well. What I did the other day is I put my hand on the coupler and just grabbing the coupler, I was able to flex it a lot just with my hand. So it's not supposed to do that. I'm assuming because of the bushings out, but with the Con or Speed Shop one, I'll be having a lot more space. And also, like I said, it'll be really direct and really firm compared to the OEM one.
what up guys it's the next day we had the car jacked up we're gonna take out the steering rack so we could put in the new condor speed shop coupler i did want to mention before i didn't really explain but the little instruction card i did have in the box it did have instructions to put this together so before you guys put everything in together the screws and also the bolts you do have to drill a hole inside the billet piece right here before i was putting the screw just onto the billet and it wouldn't work that way because the whole billet would be sliding back and forth so on the instruction card it did say you need to drill the holes in right here i'm not sure how too deep it was i did drill holes enough for these screws to go in a little bit so i know for a fact the billet won't slide back and forth while it's on the steering rack and on the steering column as well but anyways uh we had the car jacked up the only thing i've done so far was just take off two screws or two bolts right here so i took off these two bolts which led to the bottom part of the steering uh, coupler and also for the top of the steering coupler as well with the column is at so i got those taken off now i need to jack up the car which had the car jacked up ready and then from there i'll be able to slide off the power steering rack and then i could be able to put the condor speed shell coupler into the car All right, guys, give or take about 20, 30 minutes. I got the steering rack out. Of course, I'm gonna be replacing the steering rods because the steering rods on the steering rack are completely shot. Same thing with this side right here. The whole booth ripped up. Even the joints, the ball joints are showing. So gonna be replacing those. Fortunately, I won't be able to put everything together because with the steering rack, there is a clamp that comes with it to secure it in place. So I do need to order some because the ones I ordered didn't come with them at all. So this for right now, probably gonna be taking off the coupler and then we'll put on the Condor Speed Shop one and we'll see what we do from there. Uh, Might as well just use a fly to slide this off. This should come off. I'm just gonna go with this guy. Hopefully this guy slides it out. Ooh, it's coming off. <clears throat> All right guys, we got the old coupler out. I had to pry a little bit open just to get it out because it was wedged in there pretty good. So out with the old and with the new. And before I put this one on, let me just clean this up and then I'll show you guys the install for the Condor Speed Shop coupler. So looking at the steering rack, there is a hole on the bottom where the column is at, a hole that's on the bottom of this as well. So this should be able to line up where this hole is at. So we're able to put the screw and also the nut as well. So see if this is able to slide on there perfectly. Might have to give it a little bit, a few taps. Oh, started going, okay. So just a little bit of taps, uh, it will slide in. I guess I gotta keep going. So we're gonna be continuing this video a week later. I got the whole steering shaft in from Connor Speed Shop. I lost most of the footage while I installed it. Uh, fortunately, but I just want to give you guys an update on how it looks. We got everything removed that I did before, and the steering shaft is in. So for installing this by myself, did it really took too long? It took me about 25 minutes. The only tricky part I had was just the top part of the ball joint where it meets the steering shaft. That's the only tricky part I had, but overall everything went in super smoothly. All the space I have now is just very open, so all my brake lines and all the wiring that I have tucked under the manifold it's not gonna get tangled because now that the steering shaft is a lot smaller, I have more room. If you guys do on plan on getting the Connor Speed Shop shaft, I highly recommend it. It's like super easy to install. You could probably do this yourself or with the buddy and it's not too hard to install it inside the engine bay. And also, I mean, of course I had to jack up the car, but I think this is honestly probably the bang for your buck. And this is kind of expensive, but I mean, you wanna go with the best quality over something that's really cheap. Especially also if you're doing a swap like an LS swap or even the M5X swap, 
I think this is just highly recommended because it is an upgrade for the steering system. Either where I turn left or right, I know for a fact I'm gonna have a direct response and a better response than having than the OEM one. Now that the steering shaft's installed, I do want to add another part that I recently got in the mail today. So I do want to install it because I want to put everything back on. And for those of you that are wondering what it is, it's my first ever Mishimoto part. This is from FCP Euro. That's cool that they added a little bit of stickers. I don't know about you guys, but every time when I buy car parts, I love when companies send out stickers because I like to decorate my toolbox. So I like to put all the stickers that I got from my car parts onto my toolbox. And it's just a cool little decoration piece. And I love it when companies do that. Just by looking at the packaging, this is probably the nicest car part I've ever like received. I've never seen packaging like this before. So, I mean, it's pretty cool. So I recently picked up a new intake manifold boot for the M50 because the original one was um, cracking a lot and I didn't want to buy another one because they look kind of funky to me, but this one's a nice little upgrade. It should keep everything a little bit cooler, I guess, because it's silicone and it just looks a lot nicer. So gonna be putting this on the car. Um, I'll do want to do a little time lapse, but I just kind of want to just install it right away and just have everything on the car. So I'll just leave this right here and do what everybody does. Close the hood. You wait a couple seconds after that, and then magically, everything just goes back into place. This fit perfectly fine. The silicone is actually so strong that I'm able to hold the map and the intake up. Before I had a little bracket that will hold the intake just itself, but now it's able to hold it on its own, and it looks way nicer than it was before. All right, guys, I'm ending here. If you guys want to see more videos, like, comment, subscribe, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be posting more about the E30 build, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.